Hi, I'm Vicki Genfan, and I want to invite you to my mini-series called 3D Accompaniments and Arrangements. It's a 10-week series, and each week I'm going to bring you a new song with a bunch of different techniques, tools, tips, secrets uh, that I've been using for years to embellish and kind of take my arrangements to a new place. Um, after I record the song, I will give you a little rundown of the techniques that I used in that arrangement. And you'll get a tab for each song, so you'll be able to learn it as I'm playing it. But more important than that, my wish is that you'll take some of these techniques and you will make them your own. Because ultimately, you want to make arrangements that sound like you, that have your unique stamp on them. So I'm excited to share some of these things with you. Please leave any comments or questions below in the comments section. And uh, without further ado, let's get going. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try Above us on the sky Imagine all the people Living for today Imagine there's no country Oh, it's not so hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people Living life in peace oh, oh, oh. You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us The world will live as one Imagine no possessions Oh, I wonder if you
Okay, so let's look at what we have in terms of techniques that I've used in this arrangement of Imagine. Um, we start out with a descending line, and we've got a, a G chord. Now I'm going to be calling them, these chords, uh, they're fake names. I've got the capo on four, so this G chord is really a B chord, but you know what I mean. G chord. We're in the key of G. We've got a beautiful... So descending or ascending refers to moving in scale tones. Um, and you'll find this in so many songs, in so many situations. Sometimes it's a bass line, sometimes it's a, just a line running through the middle of a chord. Here we have it. It actually starts as a middle note, a middle tone. And then when we get to the C chord, it's our bass line. So we have a descending, bass, uh, descending line there. Um, we have a color tone in the C chord. Normally a C chord would be like this, and that's a C, it's a root, but I've, I've given us this note here, which is the two, the second scale tone. So this is a C2, it's a nice color. I also like it because it's, it's a note that we play throughout this, this progression. Okay, so that's a color tone there. Um, when we get to the, the I call it the, the kind of B section. Imagine all the people. I'm now using a staccato technique. And, uh, and it's an opposition to the legato, smooth, ringing out um, riff that we're using in the verse. Everything's ringing out. Really, really smooth. Now we go really different. Creates contrast. Okay, so staccato you can get by playing around with left hand, releasing pressure from the strings, and some right hand muting as well. Okay, then we, when we go to the actual, what I call the chorus, um, ba -da -da, ba -da -da. Now we have what I'm calling a full strum. So it's we fill it in. We're not muting. We're not cutting the notes off shortly. And that builds the chorus feel. It makes it a bigger feel. So again, it's really nice to have movement, to have contrast, to have a song go somewhere and not just stay there the whole time, but but kind of take you on a ride. So we're building. We're building texture, we're building intensity throughout the verse, then the middle section, then the chorus. Um, at the end of that chorus, I hope someday you'll join us. I add two beats to this B7 chord, and I also am adding, by leaving the, the top string open, there's a nice minor second there, and it's really dissonant and adds tension, so um, I hope someday you'll join us. And the world will live as one. Part of what happens when you add time to a measure, or you hold something out longer, you build the uh, you build the tension, you build expectation for a resolution. So it's a way of just adding a little tension in there. And it's especially so with that dissonant. And then we four chord and then five chord and we get back to one. Okay. Um, then we're on the third verse and what I did was I took that little uh, signature line and instead of just playing it like I did in the first two verses, I now added the octaves. Okay, it's very subtle, but it's 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 nice. Uh, okay, then when we get back to the um, last chorus, oh, I also want to go back to that chorus. I forgot to say that I did some chord substitutions. You may say I'm a dreamer. They go to this really cool. Three major chord, four, but I'm not the only one. Now I do something different, a substitute, an E minor, and then a G7, okay? 
I hope that someday you'll join us. Back to the three major chord. Okay, so I just threw that in just, again, as the unexpected. You don't really expect to hear that. Um, the last chorus. I hope someday you'll join us. And the world, now you expect to hear, will live as one. That's the one chord. And I throw in a flat seven major chord, so it would be F with the capo one. And the world will live as one. Then a C chord, which is the four chord, live as one. OK, so again, these are unexpected. They just prolong and add some tension before you resolve back down to the one chord again. And at the very end, I use uh, an E minor chord. I add it before I play the G chord. Bum, 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 and I pick out the melody. Bum, 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 bum. There's our C chord, and I go down to the A minor chord. Bum, Okay, and again, unexpected. I'm substituting chords, playing the melody, showing you, hey, you can use these chords over the melody too. So, and then we go back to our little riff and end like that. So that's a lot of stuff, a lot of different tools. Um, comments, questions, please let me know. Let me know if you enjoyed this, and I will see you for another installation next week. Thanks. <laughs>